Hey, so in this video, I'd like to show you an automation I've built to organize my private and my business life when it comes to this stuff. Invoices, letters, you name it. And it doesn't matter if they come in via paper or if they come in digitally. I've set up an automation where I just need to click once and everything will get filed the way it is supposed to be filed. Also, everything will get added to several digital brains I've created. So I can easily find that important letter from two years ago that I was looking for. Or I could ask it questions like how much did we spend on the car last year? And it will pull in the invoices for the insurance, the repair costs, the gas costs, and generate that all and give, come back with one single figure. All right, so this is how I've set this up, but you could really easily adapt this to your use case, and I will show you how you can really easily switch stuff out. So I either have stuff coming in on paper, like letters from school, from the tax man, invoices, and so on, that I need to OCR, uh, or I have stuff coming in digitally via email or something that I want to upload. And then it's either for my business or it's for myself or my family. And both are split into stuff that is tax relevant, so invoices, stuff that we spent or uh, money that has come in, or stuff that I just want to file away and be able to find again really easily. So, and that's either for business or private life. Now, when stuff comes in on paper, I have this secret weapon right here. And that is a duplex scanner from Brother called ADS1700W. And it's about the size of a packet of toast, so it doesn't take up a lot of space. And it can scan both sides of a paper in one go and then send the results out via email. And I really love this little thing because it just works. Now, many people also use something called a scan snap from Fujitsu. And both of these things are really expensive in Germany for some reason. So what I did back then is I bought this actually in America and had it imported and it was still cheaper than if you buy it here in euros. So that's a little life hack for you right there. All right, so everything coming in on paper gets digitized with my little brother here. Everything that's digital either comes in through Gmail or is uploaded by Google Drive. And Make is the automation tool that I use to automate everything. And in the end, everything is uploaded into its own Google Drive folder. It is added to my Evernote account and is uploaded to a custom JPT, which is supposed to act as my personal finance manager or my virtual finance assistant, whatever you want to call it. Now the brother has a fancy little feature where with one tap you can just send something to an email and I have defined four emails to use. Brother has a little touch screen with shortcuts and, e and each of these shortcuts sends the scanned result to another email address, which is basically just my email address with a little add-on. If you have a Gmail address, you can basically create infinite email addresses by just adding the plus sign and then some additional word at the end, and it will all be sent to that initial Gmail e address that you're using. So and inside of Gmail, I'm also using these four labels to separate stuff out that comes in digitally. So I will set these labels manually. And these are the ingredients that you need, a Google account, which is free, a Make account, which you can use the free one for uh, quite some time. If you sign up for Make, uh, I'd appreciate it if you use the link in my bio. Duplex scanner is of course optional. You can use a flatbed scanner as well, but this duplex thing is just, ah, chef's kiss. So I'm using pdf.co to extract the text from the PDF. And uh, when you sign up, you get 10,000 credits, I think for free, which will last you quite a long time. You will need an OpenAI API key, which you will have to top up with at least five uh, euros. Uh, and you can use an Evernote account as well if you want, but you don't have to. All right, so since my automation is triggered by Gmail labels, there are two ways to set them. So either the email comes in from my brother scanner and I have these filters set up in my Gmail account that will just add labels to emails when they come from a certain address. So that's one way to do it. And the other way to set labels is manually. So if I can have an email come in that I wanna file, I can just add a label to it and then that label will be attached to that email. All right, and this is what the automation looks like. It might be a bit overwhelming at first, but it's actually just more or less four times the same thing. And just, uh, yeah, and I will explain it in a second. So I have four of these lines because I have four of these labels, right? So for every label that I've set, uh, I need to have something slightly different happen. So, and it's a bit difficult to read. Let me zoom in here. Uh, so after this f router thing, it goes into each of these branches depending on the label that I've set. So this is the text 24 one, this is the scan only one, biz scan and biz text down here. If you're using more or less labels, you will have less of these lines or more of these. It's always, it always starts on the left here. It will check for emails with new labels every two hours. And this is what this module looks like. I'll tell it to look for these certain labels that I've 
created in my Gmail account. And I tell it to look for all email that has come in. And each of these branches has a little filter that will check if the email address contained a certain keyword. In my case, the label again. So if it's priv text, it will go in here and it will go through all the attachments of the email. It will filter out only the PDFs because I don't need to OCR images or whatever. I'm using the pdf.co module with a convert from PDF action. I'm uploading the file that was the Gmail attachment and I'm telling it to convert it to text and everything else I'll just leave as is. All right. Then once the OCR action has finished, I need to download only the text file of the text that was in the PDF with HTTP request. And then I'm sending the text from the PDF to OpenAI to extract some data from it. And what kind of data you want to extract is totally up to you. So what I found interesting for me was this thing, like if I a company name, that invoice or letter has been sent from, the date it has been sent. So the date that the invoice was sent on, which is not necessarily the date that I will upload it. Um, then whether it's an invoice or not, I'm using this for a file name a convention later on. Uh, I will tell it to create a summary, which I will need later on. It should suggest a file name for it because when they come in scanned, they will all, the file name will just be some form of gibberish. I have a little OCD around file names, so I'm trying to improve them here. And something else I want to extract, especially from paper invoices, is the IBAN that I need to transfer the money to later because I don't want to type that. I just want to have OpenAI identify the IBAN and then I can double check it and I can just copy and paste it later on and I don't have to put any, everything by, by hand. So I ask it to check for an IBAN, an invoice number, because this is something that wire transfer also usually requires. Uh, a BIC is a certain second identifier for, for a transaction. And that's it. You could, of course, tell it to identify all sorts of other things. Um, that's totally up to you. And then I will upload this file into its own specific Google Drive. I will try to form a proper file name over here. And I'm also storing the OCR text that I've created with this API call to pdf.co uh, just because maybe I want to use them later again and I don't want to spend the uh, pdf.co credits. And after I've uploaded it to the dumb Google Drive, I will now upload it into Digital Brains. So the first one is Evernote. I don't really know why I'm using Evernote again, uh, uh, still. Um, I've been using it for years and there's years worth of stuff in there. So I'm basically just using it for continuity's sake. But um, and it is able to search full text even in PDFs that are that have been scanned and uh, that aren't digital in the first place. Um, yeah, so that's why I'm uploading also the Gmail attachment here and not the OCR uh, result. Also, I'm forming a proper title up here again with my OCD. So the, so the next action is a little more exciting. We are uploading the OCR file, so just the text to OpenAI for some reason. OpenAI has this beautiful vision API, but it can't uh, read scanned PDFs yet. Uh, I'm linking this video by Kyle Barrent below. He has He's doing it a little differently. He's using Cloud Convert to convert every single page of a PDF into a, a image. And he's running this image to the OpenAI Vision API that has the advantage uh, that uh, the Vision API will also be able to identify images that is in the PDF. The way I'm doing it, we're only getting the text out of it. So if you have stuff that is really image heavy or graphic heavy, you might want to check out his video on how, he's, uh, on how he's doing it. Of course, converting, I don't know, a 50 page PDF into a single files and then uploading every single file through the Vision API will use a lot of credits. But if there's an important PDF or if there's a lot of uh, valuable information in graphics, you might want to go this route. All right, and once the file is uploaded to OpenAI, we can then add it to the vector store of the custom GPT that we want to use it in. So uh, yeah, this is just a add file to my vector store module. Um, pretty straightforward. And just to give you a little idea on, on how powerful these uh, custom GPT assistants can be, I'm here in my, my business assistant where I've uploaded all the invoices. You can access yours if you go to platform.openai.com. Let me know if you want to find out how to create one of these assistants. Um, and here is the vector store where all the files have been uploaded already. And here I can see all the files and invoices that have already been uploaded and added to the vector store of the assistant. And then I can do stuff like this, like ask it how much did we spend on software last month or something like this. And it will go through all the files it has and it will try to identify 
the numbers in there uh, and add them up. And it will also give you like a little footnote where it has found this information from in so that you can double check it if you want. And it'll, in the end, it will give you a total and even convert it and so on. It's really, really crazy what you can do. And this is another example. Here we are in my family uh, assistant where I've uploaded all our insurance documents, invoices and so on. Not everything is always in here, but these are just two examples. So here I've asked it, uh, are we insured if the kids break someone's glass or window? And yes, it will, you know, pull in uh, my private insurance uh, and tell me, you know, where I need to look uh, if this would happen. Uh, and here I've asked it, how much did the dog cost this year? And it comes back and tells me what the dog insurance uh, cost this year. If I had uploaded some uh, vet uh, uh, invoices or something like that, it would have also included those. So it is mind boggling how, how powerful these things are. And I'm only uh, starting out using these. So uh, really give those a try if you want. Absolutely amazing. Also, this, um, everything that you upload into a Vector store supposedly will not go to, into the training data of OpenAI. So you can, uh, your uh, dog insurance <laughs> secrets are safe. And finally, since this top branch is only supposed to work with invoices, I'm sending myself an invoice that contains the wire transfer information from that OpenAI step over here that we created in the first place. So all the information I need to create a wire transfer, the IBAN, the BIC, the account number, and so on. Uh, I'm sending that to myself in an email that I can just copy and paste the information out of there. All right, and why are there four different tracks in there? Well, because um, I'm slightly changing stuff depending on where the files should end up with. So on the bottom branch branch right here, I'm saving the files in a different Google Drive and I'm adding them to a different custom GPT at the end. But of course you could go a lot further with this. This email back here could be sent to your tax guy. Uh, it could be added to your accounting software if that works nicely with, with make.com. You could notify somebody that you're working with all sorts of other options are possible. All right, so that's my little lifetime saving automation in a nutshell. All I have to do is press a little button on my brother duplex scanner or add a label to my to a Gmail that I came that came in with and everything else will be taken care of automatically. Let me know what you think uh, and I think I will, will improve this over time and maybe do a second part uh, in the future. Thanks.